A friend of mine sent a request to show the how I would go about doing that three-sided or three-sided objects in 3D Experience or Katia V5. It's going to be basically the same. Um, and I decided to take this opportunity to show you that the results between here and what we got in NX basically is going to be the same thing. Got to remember. NURBS have a certain requirement for math. And because of that, certain things, again with circles and lines and all sorts of stuff, um, even if we're using very simple geometry, like we are here, you can see here, this is just a single order, or I'm sorry, fourth order, single segment, Right, three degree spline basically is what that is. Right? So this is the stuff that I imported in from NX. Here's my line. Uh, the only thing I had to do was recreate this flan surface because the importation of it, of the original, created some facets on the surfaces down here, and it's just the nature of step. So to get into it, I am going to use multi-section surface and for this I want to take and say all right I'm going to take this section number one my guides are going to be this line tangent to the surface and this curve and I'm going to preview that now the surface that I get, let me go ahead and go into view, turn on my control points. So you'll see the segments here and here, and a lot of control points. Again, it's the nature of surfaces uh, when we're comparing things to uh, nerves, that type of thing. It's always going to happen. Now, what I do like to do to clean this up, I'm going to double click on this is I'm going to go into spine and say this is my spine and select OK. So that way, when uh, we look at this, this goes, you know, that spine it terminates here, cleans up that end a little bit. So again, that is a, it, some people say that's oh, not class A, they're going to argue if this were a class A surface because it's, you know, too complex and so on and so forth the nature of the curves that were used that derive that surface. Now there are things that I can do potentially to simplify it. Right? If I double click on this and I do not recommend this but I'm showing you that it can be done. So if I say deviate I, I drop this down to a tenth of a mil. Look what happens to the surface. It simplifies a little bit. Right? We only have one segment in it, we have a lot fewer of these control points. So there are ways to simplify things, but I'm going to leave that at default 001, take that, and then turn off my dresser. Now, with that, I am going to go through and create the curves that I need to block in this end, okay? Um, actually, before I do that, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and do a fill. Right? If I were to take and fill this in to here, tangent to here, and then this, preview that, right? like it will do it. It'll create that surface. There's no surprises there. But again, if I look at the control points of this thing, get the dress up. What we see with fill, because remember, fill always, always, no matter how many edges you pick, the fill will always create a parametrically rectangular surface. It won't, it does not like to do the crowding bit. It doesn't like to crowd down to a point or something along those lines. It just doesn't. So it will create this parametrically rectangular surface without that crowding, but it is an extremely dense surface, lots of control points and math on that. Again, it's the nature of fill. It does a really good job, but it's the nature of the tool. 
Now I'm gonna hide this. Let me hide this. Let me hide this. Let me hide this. So what I did do is I did create a join. Now if I try doing a multi-section surface, do the same thing here. Pick this guy to there. Guides. This is guide tangency to here. It's like okay. It goes ahead and puts in that surface. Right? Comes down to that point. Well, let's see what's going on with this guy. Pick my multi-section surface, apply my dress up. And this is something that we would, most of us would expect to see. In this case, it's not the fill. This is generating that end down to a point. So that means this fourth side is infinitely small, which could potentially lead to odd surfaces, weird disturbances here on this end. Right? You may get into infinitely small radii. And if you were trying to cut that, if you weren't careful when you programmed it, you might get some chatter, et cetera, et cetera. All right. This guy, let me go back to this cat right here. And now I'm going to create that patch the way I did in the last four-sided video. So there's a bunch of ways that you can create that. Like, you know, this is that line. You've seen me in other videos. This is just the, um, the, the last method that I showed in NX. And, um, you know, someone's probably going to yell at me, oh, you can't use it, an edge, so I'll just go ahead and extract the edge. Right? And somebody's going to yell at me, oh, you don't have a point, so I'll go ahead and do my intersection point. Here. And then I need to go ahead and create, actually let me hide this guy, here, children that. Bring the originals back, there we go. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and create a couple of curves that I need. And for that, go into wireframe. I'm gonna create some isoparametric curves. So isoparametric curve number one, put it over here someplace. You know, I'm just guessing where it's gonna go. Isoparametric curve number two, reverse or switch that I should say. And again, I'm just guessing where this goes. Select okay. This is that spine curve, which I can hide. I no longer need that at the moment. Now I'm gonna create my intersection because I need that point between these two and create my spline. And the spline is going to go from this point, tangent to here, to this point. Oops. Actually, let me pick my intersect over here. Reverse. Geometry out support. U. Select OK. And multi-section surface. And for this, this is where you gotta be careful. Actually, I gotta do one more thing. Please forgive me. I need to split this to here. Just to get this segment that I want. So I'll go in here and I'm gonna go in and say section one, tangent. Section two, tangent. Now, if I just preview that, you'll see it puts in a surface that is closely approximating the guide curves that I'm gonna now put in. So here's guide curve number one, guide curve number two, and okay. And there's my lovely surface. All right, so let me go ahead and split this to this point. Split. There we go, intersection. Let me join here and here. Whoops. Split the wrong thing. I'll just leave that in so you guys can see me being silly. Again, pick my spline and pick my split. Split this out to here. So now when I go in and inspect this guy, there's my, 
what I would call very expected result. My four sides are showing. Yes, it's a little complex, but that's just the nature of 3D experience because it's going to a 0 0.001 millimeter tolerance, right? A micron, extremely tight. And we're building four, sur four sided surfaces. And we know we're going from a circle on this end. We know what nerves do with or surfaces do when we're going from circle to circle or a circle in it. It's going to com complicate things or make things complex. I should say complicate things. And it's going up to the surface, you know, the partial here and the spline there. So this is to be expected in Katia. And again, the arguments for some people will say, oh, it's not class A, if this was an exterior, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. Technically, yeah, you're right. You know, there's no arguing that. But, um, you know, with the way these systems work, making high quality class A surfaces, exterior grade, interior grade, whatever, uh, if you want parametrics at this level, uh, basically you can create, I've done some pretty impressive things in the past, whether it's a loft for an airplane, for wings, plan forms, uh, automotive exteriors, um, we're talking high quality, top notch, class A surfaces that highlight perfectly. And, you know, some of the surfaces are going to be a little heavy because of the nature of parametrics. It's just the case, especially again with Katia being uh, accurate out to the third decimal place in metric, a micron. And, um, you know, we've, we've all seen some beautiful cars that have come out of 3D experience. And, um, you know, it's not always just something that's been translated in. So um, plenty of things have been done that way. So if somebody's going to argue, it's not class A, it's not this, it's not that, let them argue till they're blue in the face. I don't care. Um, truth of the matter is these systems are powerful enough. Machining is powerful enough. CNC, all that stuff is powerful enough to handle this kind of stuff. Now, realistically, if I could simplify this some, I would, I'd find a way, maybe this curve, instead of just a straight line, I would use something to you know, simplify this curve, even though it's a straight line, uh, to make it match more along the lines with what I have up here. You know, maybe get rid of this circle and put in an actual conic um, and, you know, try to refine the shape some to minimize the impact of uh, the things that are happening. You know, like that is a, you know, a very sim simple spline. But again, you're taking the spline and mashing it down into an arc talked about this. It's the same in NX. It's the same in Katia. It's the same in any CAD system, which is basically all of them that use nerves. It's always going to happen a hundred percent of the time, unless you fudge around with the tolerances. And if you start fudging with the tolerances, you may do bad things to downstream stuff. You may need to, and depending on what you're doing, you may get away with not having perfect edges because you're going to blend across them or uh, shake the lid across them or whatever. And in that case, who cares? But um, like for something like this, perfection and heavy surfaces. But parametrics are there and it works just fine.